Well, thanks for staying with us. That's our next conversation, ending dangerous pesticides use. Now, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, the government body that regulates pesticides, a pesticide is any substance or mixture of substances intended for preventing, destroying, repelling, or mitigating any pest. They are toxic. They are toxic to both pests and humans. Take note, however, they need not be hazardous to humans and non-target animal species if suitable precautions are taken. Question then is, what are these suitable precautions that need to be taken? You may have also seen those videos that made around sometime of some people using certain pesticides to protect beans from weevils in the market. And, well, I'm pretty sure that my guests this morning will have a few more perspectives than just that one. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Patrick Ikemefuna, who is Foundation President, Crop, Crop Life Nigeria, and is Chairman, Pesticide Bill Drafting Committee. He is fellow Nigerian Society for Plant Protection and former president, Wheat Science Society of Nigeria. Thanks for joining us this morning, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have in our Abuja studio Mr. Chris Kaka, who is Program Manager, Trade Network Initiative, Initiative. as well as Mr. Azubike Wokoye, who is Food and Agricultural Program Coordinator of Action Aid Nigeria. Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you, thank you for, for being a part of our program this morning. Now, let me begin with um, Sir Patrick Ikemefuna. Well, there was this... Uh, uh, House of Representatives uh, public uh, yeah. hearing recently. You want to tell us about that? And On Thursday, yeah. There's a bill for an act for the establishment of the Pesticides Council of Nigeria and other matters related mm. uh, 2021. Okay, so and, that's the uh, Pesticide Bill Drafting Committee that you are chairman of? Yeah, I, I chairman the, the... In fact, it's a draft that is not new. We started from 20, 2002, was the first draft. Wow. Then we were having problems with different government organizations trying to kill it. We came 2016. We've been on in it from one place... To the other, even the Secretary of Federal Government got involved. Forgive me for this uh, so comical far. angle to it. People only want to kill something that is dangerous. Is it dangerous? No, because of the kind of industry we are, there are a lot of people who want to be in charge. They want to control it. So different government organizations were trying to that's why we even went to the office of federal government. Finally, this bill is in National Assembly. It has passed first reading, second reading, then we had a public reading. The public hearing was good. What was it? We had different views from the government agencies, uh, Minister of Agriculture, NABLAC, um, the um, uh, civil society organizations. A lot of them, 25 coalition, they made their presentations. And uh, as we said, it's, we are not parliamentarians. So the issue is left for the parliament now to go forward uh, with the uh, finalization of the... Before, before I go to Abuja, act. Sir, uh, Sir Kiba Fudam, what are the objectives of this proposition? Okay, the main obje objective, or the three main aims of this bill is first for, for us to obtain the benefits of pesticide. Two is to make sure that there are no the adverse effects of usage of pesticide in the effect of on effect of man and environment is curtailed or if possible prevented. And thirdly to bring out the innovation 
in pesticide usage, in both pesticide and its usage. Those are three cutting main aim of this uh, bill. Well, let's check if um, <clears throat> our two guests in Abuja are uh, in agreement with you. Well, let me begin with uh, Mr. Kaka in Abuja. Uh, first of all, what's, what's your take on this proposition as a way of ending dangerous use of pesticides? all chemicals in Nigeria, including agrochemicals. Uh, but if you go to the market today, you find that there are very toxic, highly hazardous pesticides that are actually making rounds in the market. You go to any agro dealer shop, you find them then. And these chemicals themselves have actually been found to be very harmful to not only humans, plants, and animals, but even to the environment itself. And so for us, um, last year, we actually took the initiative and said, look, let us go to the field and um, do some studies so we can have some uh, empirical evidence to actually back up whatever claim we're actually pushing to the government. And so we went, we took four states. We took Oyo, we took Benue, we took Keboi, then we took Kano as well. For obvious reasons, Benue is the food basket, Kano is a commercial center, Oyo, we had the uh, uh, instances of cash of some chemicals and some inexplicable deaths there. And so we actually went, a boy is actually known for producing rice. And um, we actually spoke to farmers. So our respondents were farmers, they were agrochemical uh, dealers themselves and extension agents. And these were the three categories of persons we actually spoke to when we conducted our research. And at the end of it all, we found that 40% of the pesticides making rounds and being used in Nigeria are actually bound in foreign countries. European uh, markets, for instance, 40% of that particular pesticide found in Nigeria. And they were bound in such countries uh, because they were found to be harmful to human health and affecting the environment. And so for us, Whichever of the organization was actually responsible for regulating pesticides in Nigeria was actually not <coughs> on top of the issue. And it was imperative for us to actually define another form of strategy or framework for us to be able to effectively manage uh, pesticide utilizations, the manufacturer, their steel distributions in Nigeria. And so when they came up with the bill, for us it was a good development. However, we found issues to, I mean, while the idea of the bill is a good one, there are issues, clauses inside a particular document which we had exceptions to. And a couple of them has to do with the compositions of uh, uh, the membership of the council. One of them, which is actually uh, 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 crop life itself. Um, if you allow me to explain, Crop Life Nigeria is affiliated to an international organization, which is Crop Life International. And behind the screens, uh, these are organizations that are actually known to be the major manufacturers of uh, seeds and pesticides across the world. Uh, for instance, Bayan is the world's largest producer of seeds and pesticides in the world. But Bayan, as we speak today, is actually facing more than 10 billion US dollar suits on account of their products that have been used by farmers and field workers uh, that have actually contacted cancers. Same thing with the uh, Sigantos, Monsantos, which is another big organization that produces paraquat. And there are field workers and farmers who have said have, they have developed Parkinson's disease on account of using these chemicals. So for us, if the regulation is not working, we need to have another form of system to actually regulate it. And that is where we actually welcome what the National Assembly is doing, except that we have issues with the content of that particular document. Just, right just a quick one, uh, Mr. Kaka, on that particular issue that you've just raised now. Before these things can come into Nigeria and be everywhere, I can identify off the top of my head two institutions that have to be involved, that, or that at least must have signed off on them. One of them is the Standards Organization of Nigeria, and the other is the National Agency correct. for Food and Drug Administration and Control. If those institutions That's correct. would sign off on them, 
then they would come in. Is that what happened? I didn't get the last thing. You said if the institutions sign off on them, then they would do what? They would come into the country, right? That's correct. Okay. Are those products in the country? We just told you of a field exercise we did, and the products are actually in the country. I'll give you an example. So essentially Roundup, you are saying, just Roundup a second, is actually just a second. Is, essentially you are saying that yeah. at, at least even before this bill, we have some structure, some systems that should be able to take care of these uh, shortfalls that you have identified, and those agencies failed to do the needful, consequently endangering the lives exactly. of Nigerians. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Let me ask uh, exactly Mr. Woko uh, about this this whole uh, issues around um, uh, solving this problem. You work with the food and agricultural. Pro you are the food and agriculture program coordinator of Action Aid Nigeria, Mr. Woko. So, uh, first of all, what's your take on all of these that that we're talking about now? Okay. Um, for some of us, we look at it from the bigger picture. Um, currently, um, our food import bill as a country increased in the first quarter um, of 2021 by 140%. Um, the importation on wheat alone um, was about 250 something billion, and we are competitive in wheat. Um, the truth about all this is that um, we deserve more from um, both the regulatory institutions and um, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Um, currently, uh, Nigeria loses about 3.5 trillion naira annually from post-harvest losses because of our low investment in processing facilities. Farmers, especially women, have access to 18%, only 18% processing facilities across Nigeria. Um, on on, 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 on um, storage facility, they have access to about 16.6% of processing facilities, which is quite low. Now, um, our dollar has lost a lot of value because of our trade deficit. So um, my take on this is that um, we desire more to be done in the sector um, because um, if you go to communities, different farming communities, you will never see where a farmer is even wearing a protective gear when applying these pesticides. Um, for some of us, we should move more into organic pesticides, organic pesticides which are easier and is more available, but needs a lot of support from government to provide trainings and support to these farmers. We need to focus on a lot of our homegrown solutions, solutions that are economically viable and sustainable. Um, a lot of, um, because our agriculture system is uh, massively focused on use of chemicals, we are losing revenue, we are degrading our lands, people are having a lot of issues, waters are being contaminated and so on. Um, it's just like at times when you hear in the news, they said um, how many cows die, and people will say that ah, um, it is the gods of those places that struck those cattle. Um, go and if you do a proper research, it might be that they had drank from water with these hazardous um, chemicals. You know, so a lot of things needs to be done. There are reports, even in some communities, where um, people have died from drinking the river water because it moves from the farm to the river. And um, there is a particular report, I think about um, 215 people 17. died, uh, 215 people or so died um, in a particular community. So we need to do more in terms of ensuring that um, we protect citizens and mm. that um, farmers are able to use the right chemicals. Even the agro input dealers that sell these chemicals, many of them don't even know the function, don't even know. And from what we are finding out, some of these harmful chemicals, you know, the farmers don't know how harmful they are. So they use it, uh, they look for it because 
they feel that it is more effective. But it's also having a lot of hazard even on the soil because from, from in a little while, that soil stops performing and they have to start struggle and they need to increase the use so that um, the soil can continue um, producing or they now start struggling to get more or uh, move to another land and so on. So we need to, in general, find better ways, you know. Um, the, the, we support the council because um, agencies that were supposed to do their work have not done well, uh, but we need to also um, consider if we are looking um, for a council to do this, what should be the composition, you know. Um, we are also um, conscious of the fact that um, there is a lot of issues around um, the cost of governance. So if you are going to get a council, for some of us, our candid advice, I mean, whenever we're arriving at that, should be um, looking at all these regulatory agencies that are supposed to do that, rather than doing new employment, can they second people from those to the council when the council is established, if the council is going to be established, to save, also save cost of governance. And um, I think uh, with this kind of conversations, um, the National Assembly is also listening, and we know that they will not um, do the wrong thing uh, because it affects everybody. Um, if you are not directly a farmer, you are also a consumer somewhat. Mm. Well, and uh, um, in terms of even the economics of it, why don't we produce our organic stuff since we have a lot of material and save our resources? Well, Mr. Wuhe, you. You, you talked about uh, looking at it, you know, in a much larger perspective. So allow me to take you to a conversation that was initiated by the DG of NAFTAC uh, a few months ago, where she mentioned in public that Nigerian exports were being turned back, being rejected by some other countries um, for one reason or the other. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of that. We understand that some of the reasons given was because our products were not up to par uh, with what was expected in those countries, I think some European countries. Could it be as a result of wrong use of some of these pesticides that you're talking about? Yes, actually, majority is the wrong use of the pesticide because um, I think for about three or four years now, even Nigerian beans is no longer going to the European, European market because of a high residue of some of this chemical. And um, now, even um, Nigeria's um, cocoa is also yeah, being threatened. Yes. And um, <laughs> if you check, the, you will see how much cocoa um, is getting into our food export bill, which is also not doing well and causing a lot of um, trade deficit for us. So, I mean, it's about the residue. And you, you, you mentioned also, you have seen on TV where sniper and other things are being used to preserve beans and so on. Um, I eat beans, I like beans. I don't use um, sniper, I use pepper. I put pepper in the sacks, and so on. And you don't have weevils get into it. So what we are saying is that there are ways, you know, like one farmer was talking about um, controlling um, 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 the fall army worm. And simply, one other farmer said, please, you don't need chemical to do this. You, you use uh, neem leaves, pepper, and so on. And they will get away. So why don't we focus more on agroecology within our country. One, if not for anything, we can produce more with that, we can produce more healthy food, we can save our foreign exchange because our food import bill is quite high. Mm. And the truth is this, even when you talk about preservation, if you have an organically produced food, it lasts on the shelf more than chemically produced food. That's true. You know, so we are losing about 3.5 trillion annually from post-harvest losses alone. So imagine if we are able to bridge that gap by investing a lot within our economy to mm. save that amount. It will add a lot even to our budget and other things we need to do. Okay. So basically, um, 
the truth is that these harmful chemicals are coming into Nigerian market, you know, and we need to actually do a lot of things. We need to also find home-based solution. We need to get our acts back. We don't, we don't need to allow these chemicals and the users run amok. Okay. Unfortunately, many of the farmers don't even know their names. They just know that this, is, well, this well, can <coughs> um, kill this pesticide. This well, can Mr. Okay, kill this there, there are so many issues that activities. you have... No, no, so many issues that you have raised and the short responses that you have given, but and quite valid. I'm pretty sure, Sir Ikemifuna, we want to respond to some of them. But yes. in the in the fray of uh, responding to some of them, um, okay, but let me. First of you. all, I thank <laughs> them because uh, they all all issues that have raised shows that we need a pesticide bill. It is only Nigeria and the whole of Africa that does not have. A pesticide bill. I've been in this industry for 44 years. In the West African country, ECOWAS, we've not been able to have a harmonized pesticide legislation because of Nigeria. Nigeria does not have any. So, also, it is only in Nigeria that Importation and regulation of pesticide is not domiciled with the Ministry of Agriculture. It's domiciled in other agencies. We are not condemning them. They are doing some good job, like NAVDAC, NESRA, uh, you have mentioned SUN, but SUN is really for agricultural equipment, you know. Not really for pesticides. As far as anyone is concerned, yeah. if it doesn't meet any standard, but, then it's the standards organization. No, but no, in, when it comes to pesticides, all, all the issues is actually the environment. The Ministry of Environment is, has a cross cutting duty against all ministries because internationally, anything that is against the environment does not pass, does not come in. So the environment actually is. is is important. So in the bill, the environment has NESRA there to be part of the numbers. We have NAVDAC. We have we are not trying to harmonize because each one of them, as you say, Sun, uh, NESRA, environment, NAVDAC, Health, are struggling, taking part of so we are having multiple even uh, bills to pay and duties, charges. And uh, as you can, you can say now, we have not benefited from this. So what we are trying to do in the bill is to harmonize. They have done a, a, a good job. In 1996, I was the one, I was president then of uh, Crop Life. It was, used to be called Agrochemical Association of Nigeria. And we made a, a road to agri, road to environment. Then there was no environment, it was FEPA. FEPA. One doctor I know was the director of FEPA. And then we had Navdak. Navdak was at that time Professor um, Oswede. And it was only Professor Oswede that called a meeting, took my letter, took it serious. And we had a meeting in its office in VI, they invited all the professors. And later on, we have what is called the Pesticide Legislation Regulation. You know, which was the guidance to bring in product. We really accepted. And NAVDAC up to now have done a good job for us with as, as far as we are concerned. But they don't belong to the industry. They are a pharmaceutical regulation organization and not a pesticide regulation organization. But they have to do with food. Yes. Then when it comes to food, it's another level. That now comes to not only to them, even standard organization, because they will now come into the uh, uh, MRLS of, of uh, as I said, residues of the of the products will now go according to the uh, determinant of the standard organization. That's why they come in. If the Ministry of Agri, that is in is doing what we have said today, FAO and uh, the whole agriculture, and Ministry of Agriculture has no no part to play in bringing in products and everything that has to be used on the product. Ten years ago or eight years ago, I was chairman for regulation of pesticides 
in for using cocoa. And we structured uh, uh, the products that should be used on cocoa, both insecticide, fungicide, and herbicide. And Federal Minister of Agri, because they were the ones that set up the committee. But at the end of it, they told Crean, Cocoa Research Institute, these are products that should be used on cocoa. But they are not the ones regulating the importation. So the importation, as we have seen, comes from all angles in this country. So the problem we have is real. The FAO has said so. My colleague from uh, Environment has said so. These are issues. Hmm. And everybody now has to come under the harmonized, the pesticide is a harmonized position where all this will play part, with Minister of our Greek playing the important part as the chair. Mm. They, they, they drive the process. But if there is a system, let, let me ask uh, Mr. Kaka, if there is a system in the country that is supposed to ensure things are done as they ought to be done, does it matter really who supervises how things get into the country? Well, you heard Sai Kemifina saying the uh, agency, or well, the Ministry of Government that is supposed to be in charge of agriculture doesn't have a role to play in importation of such things as pesticides. If there is a proper structure governing how things come into the country and go out of the country, is that important? Well, thank you very much. Um, I think what is really happening is that we've said, look, if, if you want to be a regulator, remain a regulator and don't be a player because you can't be a player in the field and also be a regulator. It is not going to be favorable enough to anyone. It wouldn't be fair. And so for the government, Ministry of Agri playing its role it play as wanting to stand as a regulator, it, it, it actually has no problem. The, the, the thing has to do with NAFDAQ itself, which actually... Uh, certify this thing like you also observe yourselves and give approval for those who want to import, those who want to manufacture, distribution and all the rest of it. What we are saying is that we've got a problem with the way they are doing issue and there is a, a public health a risk here on account of their own inefficiency. And that's why we're also saying, look, we actually welcome the bill that is going on. Let, let, let me give you a graphic of what is going on. That is something we've all agreed now that, look, the, the pesticide itself, it's also said to be very toxic and very harmful. And what the manufacturers are saying that, look, perhaps what you need to do, if, if, if you, you need to use them in the proper way for you not to actually have any of this impact. So they'll tell you that if there is any negative impact on human or plant or on the environment, it is a function of your misuse or excessive use of it. But then the question is this, in the countries where these items are produced, they have actually been banned what they do is they ban the sale of that particular product in their country, but they don't close down the factories that actually manufacture them. And so the manufacturers themselves are beginning to find alternative markets, including Nigeria. I can tell you that as of 2018, the FAO statistics shows that pesticide import into Nigeria was about 384 billion US dollars into Nigeria alone. That's to tell you that it's a huge market. And so, with that kind of system on ground, you would then begin to see that anybody who says that you are misusing the whole thing, you don't use it properly very well, that is why you are having negative impact of it, does not really fly in the first place. Because those who banned it should have also said, why did you ban it? What you should have done is perhaps begin to use them more appropriately in that particular market. But to answer your question, I think the ministry is doing its job. For us, we don't find the ministry going to be able to actually do these things. Let it remain with the council they actually want to propose. But let me react to something. I heard uh, your guest in Lagos there said, the bill we have a copy of, we never saw some of NESRA included in it. I saw SON, I saw Agricultural Research Council, Ministry of Justice, uh, Nigerian uh, Customs Service, and all the rest of them. But the current regulatory agencies we, do not, we didn't see quarantine, Nigerian Cultural Quarantine Service on that council. We did not see NESRA on that council. We didn't see a couple of other ones who should actually be having a role to play in that particular council. And so for us, the bill idea to regulate importation, sales, and distribution of pesticide in Nigeria is a good one. But the current content of the bill is not going to help address it. As a matter of fact, the, the, the harmful impact of it and the sanctions for the manufacturers of this product is totally empty in the document. 
So if there is any negative impact on the environment, the manufacturers are not to be blamed. They blame it on the users themselves, which is not the case overseas now. In Europe today, they have agreed now that people who manufacture these things that they are not actually wanting to use in their country should shut it down. And I see why Nigeria should not do the same. The other thing I want to point out, like you said earlier, has to do with the issue of uh, the Nigerian ban of uh, products, like my colleague said, the beans has been actually banned from the European market for a very long time. Why? Because the pesticide residue level of what is used in actually preserving it uh, was actually too high. It will interest you to know that um, the WTO Codex Alimentaris allow each country for purpose of uh, food safety to determine what is their maximum residue level. And Nigeria has adopted that of the EU. The same EU you buy these products from, use the pesticide in Nigeria, return the products back to them as export, and they reject the same product on you. And you begin to see the double standards. You gave us the pesticide we're using, we grew the crop with that particular pesticide, send it back to you, and you are rejecting it that the, uh, the, the, the pesticide residue level is actually too high. So for us, it's actually a double standard for those who are producing this pesticide. On the other hand, we feel that, look, these pesticides themselves that are actually being banned in foreign countries should not have any space in Nigeria. I was giving you an example of Roundup. Roundup is a herbicide that you walk to into any agrochemical dealer shop. People use it in killing weeds on their farm. It has been found to be a major cause of cancers. Yet, it is still in the Nigerian market. NAFDAQ is there. They are not doing their job. You ask them, they tell you that it's porosity of, uh, I mean, the, Nigerians, uh, the Nigerian border is porous. Why are you not doing your job? Why are you not picketing these people who are selling these things, who are importing them in the first instance? So for us, we don't care who actually becomes, what kind of uh, system we put in place to regulate the, the, the import and sale of these things. We want one that should be able to take public health into consideration and do it, and sanction manufacturers of these products that are actually banned overseas, importing them into this country, selling them into Nigeria. I, I, I want to. So that's, that's, a, that's a valid it. one, uh, Mr. Kaka. But I, I want to ask you what what that law, this proposition, this bill should do about farmers who sometimes go a little over the radar in the application of these products. Because just as you said, I mean, it's only it's common common sense to say, look, if this is your recommendation, and we are doing it. Part of the recommendation we are using as advised, um, why the rejection then? So possibly, I'm not holding a holding, uh, brief for anyone. I'm just saying, in the event that there was some excessiveness on the part of maybe one or two farmers who take these things out of the nation, is there a room, is there room for some form of... Um, I don't know, uh, punitive measures against anyone who goes a little overboard in the application of these products? As users themselves. Yes. So th this is the challenge. I mean, what is really... Okay, I think they're going to fail. Yes, go what, ahead. What go ahead. Really, I can hear What you. is really bad is bad, as it were. Mm. If you blame the user of the product for perhaps misuse or excessive use of that particular product, uh, you, you as the manufacturer having no blame to to take from it, I don't think is a fair deal. No, 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 I'm not exonerating, I'm not exonerating the, the, the manufacturer, not at all. I'm not exonerating the manufacturer. I want to believe that this bill that is being proposed will deal with that issue. I'm just saying in the event that indeed there is a shortfall, well, there is some, some action on, the, on our part not doing it right. I mean, what, what should be the, what should be the, I mean, I'm just thinking about us, cleaning out our own end and then being able to deal with those who are uh, from those from the others from outside. I, I got your question at the first instance. I'm saying you cannot blame the users of the chemicals themselves. A lot of our food producers, smallholder farmers, some of them are not literate enough to actually uh, know what the content of this document is also, I mean, what, what this pesticide can That's actually do. That's another issue altogether. Is, uh, they go to the market, it's been recommended by uh, an extension worker for them to actually use on their farm. Okay. We are saying this thing, irrespective of the carefulness you take in using it, has got an impact on the environment. Okay. Look, today that, that, that's now, noted. My, the my, big population, which are natural pollinators. Yeah. 
that, that's that's taken, uh, and I, and I, I respect that, that that opinion. Let me let me ask uh, Mr. Wokoye. Well, Mr. Wokoye, you've been listening to all of this, and um, I like the fact that you looked at it from a broader perspective. Now, in terms of broader perspective, and let's begin to uh, maybe uh, is this our own public hearing now of this bill? <laughs> what 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 are the some of the shortfalls that you have seen in this proposition that you think? Will, will, be, will need to be addressed if it is supposed to perform its function long term. Okay, like I said, um, one, we are conscious of um, the large spending on government. So we are conscious of um, the fact that um, is the, uh, we need to be careful about creating more bodies that um, public um, expenditure will be going into. So we are suggesting by the time we are able to address many of these issues um, within the bill in terms of establishing this very council on pesticide, that um, a strong suggestion is that um, from these existing regulatory agencies, that people that are supposed to be staff of the council or serve on the council should be seconded from there so that we don't do new recruitments also. That's um, one of the suggestions. Then two, um, this is also happening because of our far low investment in extension services, which is supposed to be the fulcrum. Because um, if farmers um, in communities know about these um, harmful chemicals, they will, I mean pesticides, they will avoid them. You know, if they know how to do a lot of alternative ways naturally, they will avoid them. Currently across Nigeria, Access to farm demonstration is about 5.6%. So I don't know how we want our agriculture sector to grow. So we need massive investment in the agriculture sector. Our current proposed agriculture budget is just about 1.7% instead of 10% that mm -hmm. is recommended by the Maputo Declaration. You know, farmers field school. Only less than 15% of farmers across Nigeria has access to farmers' field school. You know, information is not up to 50% across board. So we actually need investment. Um, a lot of investment needs to also go into agroecology, which will reduce a lot of chemical use. Why? Chemical, high chemical use is not even sustainable in the first place, you know? Because it means that if you use some certain chemicals, within a short time, the soil is degraded. Mm. And many of these chemicals contribute highly to the challenges of climate change we are faced with. So why don't we adopt natural solutions that are cheaper, affordable, and we can use it to also reduce our import bill in the agriculture sector? I started by saying that in quarter one of 2021 alone, our food import bill went up to 140%. And I gave an example of wheat only in the first quarter, about 250 something billion, 50, 258 billion was used to import wheat. Now, <laughs> only our food import bill alone is con contributing to the indirect devaluation of the Naira. Mm. Because our trade deficit is getting larger and larger. And it's only through the agriculture sector that we are competitive to fill this trade deficit. Uh, absolutely. So we need to look inward. We yeah. need to increase our investment in agriculture. Hmm. Well, it, it looks to me like, I mean, just as you have, you began by saying that you've got to take it from a broader, in a, on a broader perspective, and this is definitely you know, a broad one. Well, we're winding now. Now we have just about three minutes before we go. So, uh, Sai Kebefuna, um, you have listened to other panelists on this issue, and uh, you said you've been at this for some 44 years. Yes, yes. Uh, this must be an exciting one for you. Which other stakeholders um, do you think need to be onboarded on this conversation in order for it not just to see the light of day, but to be long-term effective. Remember what Mr. Kaka said the other time about the um, low literacy level of the primary users. How does this bill address that, for instance? Yes, the, low, the bill addresses the issue of usage and product stewardship. Product stewardship 
means that you take your product from manufacturer to users and user level, and even to disposal. Uh, my colleague from the FAO, in October last year, 2020, there's a partnership agreement between FAO and Crop Life on basic sustainable development goal, the SDGs. And this includes innovations, as he has, he has seen, new methods, biological norm, pesticide-based uh, uh, options. Also look at the climatic situation and environmental issues in that partnership between crop life and uh, detail. Uh, so we're in partnership, I agree with what the FAO is saying, we're in partnership with them. With Kaka, too, is making silent points. Composition of the uh, membership of the council, no problem. They can, all what we need is a pesticide bill. Whether we are in it or not, that's not a, a pesticide bill that runs and says what is in the bill and keeps pesticide management and usage in Nigeria. Make that law. Whoever puts it harmonized, we don't care. But let us have a pesticide bill. Does the law that you are proposing also factor in what the two of them have talked about, local production of these pesticides? Yes, we already have local production. We have local production. We have is that to say that we don't have enough, that we have to import? No, no. The, there, are, is, there are different products that are produced. We have herbicide, we have insecticide, we have fungicide, we have rodenticides, we have acaricides, we have everything. All kinds of and science. pesticide is not only used in agriculture, because there are pesticides that are used also in health, in malaria control, because you cannot. But the, they also have vet, uh, veterinary uh, pesticides used for the back of uh, cows, acaricides. But you cannot produce pesticides that are even used in wood to cure wood, right? but all must first go through agricultural usage because 90% or 80% of all pesticides are used in agriculture. Mm. So nobody will invest money for insecticide or for any pesticide just for use on health or use on uh, industrial mm. usage. No, it's first in agriculture and then it goes into you said in other areas. Okay. So I believe that my colleagues of Kaka and uh, Mokoye have, we're on the same page. All what we need to do is to look at the ingredients of within where we can say we can put it one or two or three together and make it a good bill. Okay. And I think that's what they're doing in National Assembly. It's a parliamentary issue. I'm please asking all of them who have issues, them, FAO or CACA, please put your views to the National Assembly. Well, and they will be able to take care of that, and I think we should have a new bill. Well, gentlemen, uh, 30 seconds either way. Um, do you see, um, how do I put this now? Do you see a law where the, the National Assembly has a very good and solid understanding of this and will be able to give Nigeria a very solid, long-lasting pesticide law. Let me begin with you, Mr. Wokoye. Okay. okay um, uh, now, the National Assembly, the Committee on Agriculture, they are actually intentional. Intentional in the sense that um, if they don't want the best, um, they wouldn't have called for a public hearing. And um, it was good that they took submissions from different um, stakeholders and um, allowed them stakeholders to make their position known. And they said they will also set up um, a committee to work further on the bill, which they will include certain stakeholders. So uh, we believe that um, by all these conversations that we are having, um, definitely we will come out better as a country. Um, but 
like I will always say, let's look at our local solutions to, to save foreign exchange and to export more. Let's focus more on agroecology, you know, so that we are not chemically based agriculture sector because we are actually really faced with um, even climate change. And if we continue highly chemically based agriculture, we will continue to expand and have more negative impact on, uh, on our environment, causing more climate change and um, losing foreign exchange. Okay. Thank you. Well, Mr. Kaka, um, how do you how do you plead? <laughs> <laughs> um, just want to say thank you so much for having us. Um, we're all on the same page that we need some form of regulation because the one we have at the moment is not effective enough. And, and if the National Assembly has taken the initiative to have a bill, uh, all well and good. Our interest is that, look, that the voices of the masses of this country, whether as producers, as net consumers of food, is actually protected. And public health uh, risk is not actually created on account of this particular bill. Uh, from what we saw at the public hearing, uh, the lawmakers are actually open. Uh, they've decided to have uh, the alliance we both belong to, the alliance uh, for action on pesticide in Nigeria to be part of the technical committee. And um, we are hoping with such inclusions, we, we will bring the voices of Nigeria into, uh, into the content of that particular bill where the user, the consumer of food are all protected uh, against the business cases of the manufacturer that uh, the, the negative impact you get of it is, is as a result of your misuse or overuse of the particular product. But like my colleague also said, beyond regulating pesticides, is that look, we begin to look away from using chemicals as food producers because uh, it is not going to help us in the long run. We might become dependent on manufacturers of this product. We begin to look for all the alternative means, which are homegrown solutions that have been found to be effective in producing our food. So if we get some form of integrated pest management uh, ideas that can actually fly, I think that's where government should actually put its money at the moment down, okay. while the bid is actually running concurrently with it. Well, we have to thank you very much, gentlemen, for, for the inputs that you have made into this conversation. Most certainly, many people are hearing thank you. about this for like the first time. Many people don't even know, for instance, that agriculture is this complex. <laughs> well, we have to thank you very much, gentlemen, for being here. Mr. Azubuke Wokoye is Food and Agriculture Program Coordinator of Action Aid Nigeria, as well as Mr. Chris Kaka, who is Program Manager Trade Network Initiative. Both men joined us from Abuja Studio, as well as uh, Patrick Ikemefuna, who is Foundation President, Crop Life Nigeria, and Chairman, Pesticide Bill Drafting Committee. He is First Nigerian Managing Director and CEO of Syng Syngenta Limited, Fellow Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, and former President with Science Society of Nigeria. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, the home stretch is next. After now, please stay with us.